Okay, so it's been a while since we've done any sort of crazy builds and we're gonna start off by testing some hardware that we've had for a while that we have not actually used yet. That being specifically the Intel W3175X 24 core 48 thread processor, which uh, Steve used to capture some records by doing chilled water and overclocking, coupled with the ROG Dominus Extreme motherboard. We're talking about a $3,000 CPU, and like a $1,700-ish motherboard. I don't know what the current price of this thing is. Yeah, this, uh, this one's a bit extreme, like in every sense of the word. You know what, guys? I got new merch. It's available now, crowdme.com slash jc2cents. We got zip-up hoodies, we got tri-blend, we got a new logo. I digress since 2012. It's a digress logo. You guys have been asking for that. Anyway, well, guys, we got all kinds of stuff. Zip-up hoodies, beanies, polos. Don't take my word for it, because obviously I can't do this ad. So just look in the description below and you guys will find the link. Thanks. <laughs> so fortunately, AlphaCool sent us this massive care package um, of radiators and blocks and things. And one of the reasons why we hadn't done anything with it yet is because we were really lacking um, cooling for it. So as you can see, they sent us over here the XPX Pro 1U. And the reason why it's a 1U is because technically, this processor is actually based off of its Xeon counterpart, which is a $10,000 CPU. The very same one Linus broke or dropped and broke and ruined some memory channels on it. So it, it doesn't use conventional mounting mechanism. In fact, the mounting mechanism found on this particular socket doesn't even have a retention system. It's actually held in place by the cooling solution. So as you can see, you know what, we need to actually put down some protection on this table first. All right, so this obviously isn't the Gamers Nexus mod mat, this is the Alpha Cool one. But because I have to put the motherboard directly on something for cooling, I guess technically I could use the cardboard box. Um, <laughs> that, that's a huge bitch. So the thing with the LGA 3467 socket, at least as far as I can tell, because I've never actually built in one, is when you take off this plate, there's no retention for it. You can see where things would mount down, right? Like here, 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 right? These are threaded. Uh, because these are technically based off of server counterparts, um, there's no retention system for it. So we couldn't even mount it and play around with it the time we wanted to because of the fact that we had no way to actually mount this sucker down. So as best as I can tell, you just put the socket or the CPU in the socket and then right, whatever your cooling solution is gonna be. Now they call this a 1U because this is actually a water block designed for blade servers. So this is, they call this 1U because the height of it means it will fit in a 1U blade. Uh, I Presumably they maybe have taller ones for like 2U and maybe even 4U, I don't know. But because it's also a server solution is why you get all these ports and all these different options and stuff on here. Since we're using this in a desktop platform, we can just use the ones on top. So we just need to plug these two holes here. So here's what we're gonna do. Oh, and then in terms of why the hell not, because it takes two 24 pin power plugs, as you can see right here, we've got two 1600 watt power supplies from EVGA. And then again, because why the heck not, we're gonna pair that now with two 2080 Ti for the Win3 graphics cards. Obviously, we're gonna be putting it under water. We need memory, and I don't think I have six matching set uh, DIMMs of any other brands. We'll be stealing six of them out of Skunkworks for this. And then what else? Um, we need to just do like an, an M.2 OS drive or something like that. So why don't we just go ahead and build it and see what happens. Hopefully it boots on. There are six EPS power plugs on this thing. Four eight pins and two six pins. I feel like I need to pull out that third power supply. It sounds like Infinity War when he had to like refire the star. Yeah. <laughs> All right, here we go. Let's just, let's just let's put it together, see if it works.
All right, well, this monstrosity is built. I don't even know if it works yet. Both of these graphics cards are brand new. The CPU has not been tested since we got it. It is a retail sample, not a, an engineering. The motherboard hasn't, nothing's been booted yet, except for the power supplies. They're the same ones we use when we do the RIPGN stuff. So we've got two power supplies here, a primary and a secondary. So the secondary, I'm gonna turn that one on first. And if I turn on the primary, okay, cool. Nothing turned on like by default. We've got OLEDs on the screen saying ROG Dominus Extreme. Let's just push power and see what happens. We just shut down. Turning back on. I don't know if it's learning RAM. I've, I've never booted this platform before. Hey, so we should be getting something on the screen. Yes! We have three keyboards and two mice and four hubs. Mm. Okay. I only see one. All right, so we're booted up and everything works, obviously. Um, we got 49,152 megabytes of RAM showing because, well, we've got six, we got six DIMMs in there, um, which is kind of strange because they're eight gigabyte DIMMs. And at first we only had 32 gigs showing. And so, it, so the scary part about this particular CPU is the fact that, like I said earlier, the only thing that holds it down is the cooler itself. There's no retention system where at least with Threadripper, which is a similar size die, it has that torque wrench that holds it down. And so you, you tighten in a certain order until you get the clicks and then you know it's good to go. And the reason why with Threadripper they state that that's important is it was a certain amount of tension needed for the pin contact for all the pins to be contacting. So initially we were only getting 32 gigs to show up, which means that like what, two of our dims weren't showing up or something like that. So I just basically went, okay, well, I'll just keep tightening it. You tighten the outside corners or the, the opposing corners until the threads stop because it bottoms out and the threads don't go any farther. Then the two that are in the middle, one here and one there, it says you tighten those down next. The thing is those threads don't really stop. As far as I can tell, it seems like they kind of just keep going. And so I don't want to cause damage to our CPU. So I don't think I had those tight enough. So when I turned off the system and tightened those down further, then we got all the RAM to show up. So just kind of a little, little note to mention there. So now we are going to go ahead and do some, like some Cinebench and some 3D Mark. Maybe overclock the graphic card, graphics card slightly. And there's our 28 cores and 56 threads right there. I think earlier I called it a 24 core, 48 thread. It shows how much I don't know. So right now we're sitting at 30 C under idle. And as soon as I hit go, that's a lot of squares. And we jumped up to 62, 63. Okay, 63C under load and a 5,460 <laughs> score without an overclock. Wow. Frequency is at, hey, 3.77 at 64C, 5530. All right, let's go ahead and save that. Look at, look at the freaking CPU chart. It's just like, blah, blah. <laughs> 5507. We lost a little bit of score. Oh, you, you didn't <laughs> loud enough. All right, we'll go ahead and save that result. And then. <laughs> That's the processor we're running. That's what we're running right there. The old, the old trusty Celeron D LGA775. So all I do is apply XMP and on the ASUS board, it'll ask you when you apply XMP, if you want to also apply an all core turbo clock. And we said no to that. So this is just RAM timing, RAM voltage, uh, and then RAM frequency, which is based on the XMP on this, which is 3,200 megahertz, uh, megahertz. That's not that fast. I mean, when we were overclocking for our, you know, LN2 stuff, we were doing 4,000. So that's not that fast. But I want to see what just allowing faster RAM access for the CPU does, if anything. Yeah, so we lost 100 points. Interesting. For Sanity, let's go back. On a, on a side note, we ended up putting the PCH fan as well as the, uh, the heatsink fans for the VRMs to max, because even under idle conditions, the VRMs were hot. Like just touching the heatsink was like, holy crap. So that was one thing worth pointing out. Okay, so there's that. Now we're back to just out of the box settings, 2133. So interestingly enough, even by going back to the default settings, we still are slightly even below where we were just a second ago. So we lost like 100 points from one reboot to the next. We made sure virus protection was off, all that sort of stuff that could be running. Um, so I don't know. I don't know what happened, but I mean, I can't complain about that score and this is all stock. So what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna go ahead and 
We're not gonna save that score. We're gonna do a little bit of tuning to the GPUs real quick. We're gonna run 3D Mark, and we're gonna get 3D Mark and a Cinebench score, and then we'll play around the overclocks and see how much farther we can actually push it, if that much at all. We're hitting 63C on water. With it currently where it's at, we might only achieve like 4.5 or 4.4 maybe. Um, I think Steve was running like obviously uh, ice water to get it to the temp or the speeds that he was getting, which was five gigahertz. So yeah, um, let's see how far we can get. It, w it hit 106C. <laughs> 104, 105, oh 107, 50, 65, 16, Yay. woo! All right, so we added a little bit of auxiliary cooling to this. Uh, we're pushing some air down between the cards because you know SLI configs, even though there's a slot between, still need some better airflow for the top card. We overclocked our graphics cards to about 2130. And then we added two fans for the RAM because the RAM was getting kind of cold, or cold, yeah, we wish. It was getting kind of toasty. We gained a thousand points. That's crazy. Look at that, look at that. <laughs> like each time the bar moved to the right, the likelihood of hearing <laughs> went higher. I think we're getting a pretty good feel for where this CPU can land. Obviously at this point, stability comes with temperature. You, it's already been proven that as ASICs get colder, they perform better. I mean, that's why you use extreme cooling for overclocking. 15,597? Was it 15,100 we had to beat? 15,000, no, 15,002 something, right? If I reach the point to where I can't remember numbers anymore, what's my phone number? I don't even know. 13,284. Okay, so yeah, we're just a tad above, above that. 15,597. 15,575. I mean, that, look at that. That's almost matched our other score, which is funny. Because we're not running chilled water. This is all just normal cooling. Yeah. A 480 rad with regular room temp, you know, air going through. And this is not the coldest room. This is way warmer than our other studios. We have no air conditioner in here. Okay, so looking at Steve's score with two cards and a 3175X, <clears throat> he had a CPU score of 15,585. But well, we got a 15,526 on our GPU. He's got a 16,870, so obviously a commanding lead, right? Our GPU is clearly lacking here. Um, I really wanna see how close we can get. Not today, uh, but th this is obviously just us trying to reignite the ignition on, uh, reignite the ignition and accelerate with NOS. The Rip GN series, because that was fun. God, it's not gonna happen, it's not gonna happen this week, but we, we need to bring in exotic cooling. I wasn't expecting our CPU score to be that far. I know for a fact he was using chilled water. So what was he testing that with? I know he hit five gigs because he did that on live stream. So how the hell did he hit five gigs max turbo core clock? We were 4.815, but got a higher CPU score than him. I think, I think this needs to happen. And before we see each other face to face next month. All right, guys, you heard it here. <clears throat> Rip GN is back on and my Titan RTX cards are getting ripped apart. All right, guys, thanks for watching this long video. Literally, we, we were at this for like 10 hours. <laughs> Way too long. Is that, is that? <laughs> That's what happens when you cross the 10 hour mark. Jay can't end the video. <laughs> I don't know what to say. No, I'm just totally, I don't understand what's happening here. This... I know, it's hilarious and you're gonna be impossible to edit.